Okay, one more thing I wanted to show, and I was talking about this right here. In, in the center hole is the bolt hole that bolts it together. This is just a, a vent hole. You can see yeah. Do the flashlight thing. You can see the little hole right there. That's when the gas comes in, it needs some place for that air to go. So that's a vent hole. And you may see gas dribbling out over on this side, on the back side. This would be like the engine side. And uh, if your float is stuck, it's gonna fill up and dribble out there. It can also, when the, uh, point at it. When you have the jets in here, they are actually at the le same level as the fuel so that when the, the, the float stops, it'll fill up and then it'll fill up that jet also. So if the float is stuck open and this keeps, continues to fill up with fuel, it'll flow out of that jet and come dribbling out your carburetor. So if it comes out the throat here, it's coming, filling up to that jet level and leaking out. If it's really stuck, it's gonna come all the way up here to the top and then leak out on the back side right here. As you can see, well, I'll do it this way. There's a there's that hole right there. And uh, you know, if it's really stuck, it'll it'll flow out that vent hole also. Usually, it'll flow out the jet hole first because you know the fuel will find its level. But the other thing I wanted to show is I was talking about. Um, so that's vent hole the center one is the bolt hole which bolts it all together but this this top one closest to the gas adjustment valve is that's where this fuel well like like your uh, drinking well that's where the fuel well sits and uh, it screws in over here and you can see down below here there's just a tiny little port and it's actually hollow if you can see down in there it's it's hollow and this is where your um, I put it all away when you're you have your idle circuit and your idle mixture the jet for your idle goes down in there so in this fuel well is where it, it draws the fuel for your idle. So the, there's tiny little porthole, and uh, this one's actually plugged up. There's two of them right there, and it, this screws in that third hole right there and allows a little bit of fuel to the idle circuit. Now on one of, on one of these, I can't remember which one. You can see what happened. You know, it broke off when I was trying to remove it, and then this was stuck down in there. And it was stuck in the bottom of that, you know, down in the, the bottom of this hole. And when I tried to grab it with a, you know, a drill bit or something, it would just spin because there's nothing stopping it. What I ended up doing was taking a wire poking it through the, the hole in the, the bowl here to stop it from turning. And then I was able to grab a hold of it and uh, pry it out actually, and finally got it out. That was like an hour of fighting, that little broken off piece of fuel well. So be careful when you're trying to, you know, these were just so rusty that I was just having to, to drill it out. You can see where I drilled this one out. You know, it's just all chewed to heck. and. Uh, Still has some decent threads on it once I got it out of there. But um, once I got it, I can't remember if I had to do the easy out on that or uh, just the reverse drill. You can get drills that have the uh, spiral going the opposite way. So when you're drilling, if it catches, it's like the easy out. It'll go ahead and turn it, turn it out. Because a normal drill is just trying to drill it further in and I didn't want that so I got a uh, reverse drill that fit in there and 
was drilling out the center of it. And that's what happened with this one. It just wouldn't come out, wouldn't come out, and uh, until finally the bottom broke off of it. So aggravating, very aggravating. This is more what it should come out like, um, but also, side note, the uh, rebuild kit doesn't include a fuel well. So you have to order another one of those, had to order the, uh, to give you the other parts of the float, the float valve and the, the pin, but they don't give you a float. So another 40, 50 bucks, I'm not sure how much the fuel well is gonna cost me. Um, and uh, you know, th there's other parts that were just, some of like this uh, butterfly plate, I could probably clean it up. You know, this one was in pretty good shape. This one, not so much. <laughs> and you can tell the, uh, the smaller one goes in the throttle throat. So it's a smaller, nice thick plate. This other one was right here in the, uh, the is a choke valve in the, and you can see this has a bigger opening than this. Actually on the, the Model B carburetors, this is a little bit larger. Gives you a little bit more, probably a top end performance when you need all that fuel in there. Um, but I'm gonna have to get another choke butterfly valve because uh, <laughs> that one is very rough and rusted. I'm surprised because this one's made out of brass and uh, this one was some kind of metal. And uh, I guess one of these carburetors didn't even have, it was totally stripped down. So like the, uh, the shafts, it didn't have shafts in it, the choke shaft. Um, the plates, so still had some of the jets, the ones that were stuck, and whoever before me couldn't get them out either. And uh, so I'm gonna wait on doing that. I'm gonna just start preparing these for the uh, for the epoxy paint and uh, figure out how I'm gonna block off each of these. Now the threads and the ports, you don't want to get any epoxy paint in those. Okay, I think I have a plan now. Yeah, I've got this metal prep for uh, cleaning parts for getting prepared for paint. And I also have the stuff I'm going to use in the gas tank, this uh, cleaner degreaser and metal prep. So I may revert to that to really get these carburetors ready. But I think what I'm going to do you know, for this epoxy paint is I'm going to mix a little bit of this metal prep. It says mix it with a little bit of water and then using a stiff brush, scrub, 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 and then rinse it off. I got a, two buckets down here, a bucket with a little bit of a Dawn uh, dishwashing detergent, which is great for degreasing stuff. So I'm going to rinse that off and, and uh, scrub it. And I got another bucket of just clean water to get it and then let them totally dry. Um, it was sunny today. So now it's getting all cloudy. I was going to, the plan was to take them out and set them out in the sun. I may still set them outside and uh, let the heat and the sunshine get to them so that they'll, they'll dry and uh, they actually towel dry them and then set them out. Because it is so humid here in Georgia that you can set bare metal outside and you know you can almost watch it turn to rust. So I'm gonna try to get them as clean as I can, wash it with soap and water, rinse it with water, and then, uh, and then move on to uh, letting them dry and then getting them painted. So I think I'll switch to uh, time lapse here because it'll be long time and pretty boring stuff to watch.
Okay, it's been sitting up about 15 minutes. It smells pretty bad, kind of like uh, sulfur, rotten eggs. Um, turned it a little bit of a grayish color. And it said after about 15, 30 minutes, you know, and these have already been scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. So, you know, I was already starting out with something that was pretty clean. So I'm gonna start with the... The first one I did, just do a little bit of washing it out. This has uh, water with Dawn detergent in it. Uh, you just stop the etching process and uh, rinse any thing off of it that's on there. This is the, the main bolt that holds it together, but this is the, uh, the, the fuel for the main jet. But if you put water in this side and let it go through these ports, it should come out here and it should come out in the main jet area here. So you can kind of flush through. By holding your finger on that bottom, I can see the water pouring back out through the uh, fuel well and the uh, main jet and the, the GAB the fuel mixture area. So that is pretty clean and flushed. Gotta let them dry. Then they towel them off a little bit, speed the drying up. So I got the dehumidifier going here in the garage just to try to keep it dry. Okay, before uh, painting and finishing it up, I'm checking. I'm cleaning up the threads on uh, the carburetors and make sure you get the, uh, the fine fine threads and uh, the right size tap and dies. The other thing I was doing is I'm trying to find the screws and bolts, you know, fine threaded that will fit into the uh, so I can just screw those in so when I paint it, it won't mess up the threads. So it's kind of difficult because all these are uh, fine threads, but you can see I, I found some old engine bolts that were fine thread and some th screws that were fine thread. And on the bottoms too, I found some uh, uh, grease fittings that are fine threaded that'll fit in the GAV in both of them. And, uh, old fine thread bolts and uh, I'm gonna uh, keep the uh, the shaft in there so it'll just keep 
paint from getting in there. You know, otherwise you'd have to take like a drill or a hone to get it back out and uh, try to, uh, if, if you have the old jets, you just screw them back in and you know, once you're done, take them out and throw them away. But most of my jets were crap. So <laughs> I had to drill them out so I have nothing left to uh, plug the holes with. So like these uh, down in here and uh, down here. So I'm just gonna have to try to find um, some fine thread screws to put back in there. Anyways, you gotta clean out all the threads with taps and dies and uh, get the uh, all the ports plugged up before you start painting. Okay, we've been letting the uh, carburetors dry out for a day, and I actually have some fans blowing on them too. And I got them all plugged up, all the ports and uh, little screws, so I don't get paint everywhere. And I'm going to try to go to the paint booth and uh, paint them now. Okay, we're out here in my, uh, now we're relocated to my paint booth. And we got the heater turned on nicely today. And the uh, infrared heat. So we're probably, I think we're about 90 degrees, 95 degrees. So let's go down here. And I'm just gonna give them a coat of, And the ports so that they don't paint this run into the ports. This is the Appliance epoxy, so Okay, we're going to take a look at the uh, carburetors. I finished spray painting them and uh, they've dried a couple days now, so hopefully they shouldn't be too sticky. I just kind of uh, plug some of these off. Screw them in there hard. the 
little piece of gas line hose and stuffed it in there. I'm gonna run the uh, run the taps through it and just double check everything and make sure nothing is plugged and check the passageways. <laughs> 